Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. We already understood parallel programming in my previous video lecture and today we will learn the challenges in parallel programming. The parallel way of trying to solve a problem by the parallel processing or grid processing was known by the term called supercomputing. This idea of supercomputing is pretty old and date back to 1950s and 60s. The major vendors of supercomputers include the IBM, the Fujitsu, the Cray, the Intel and have a dozen of company to actually add up to the list of supercomputer vendors throughout the globe. Basically, supercomputer is nothing but a cluster of computer which is interconnected by means of networking hard drive. You can see the picture out here where we have the various computing resources actually is going to be stacked in the rack and you have a, you have the network engineers and the system administrators have to physically wire them up and enable them to actually communicate over a network. Now having spoken about supercomputers, what are the use cases of supercomputers? What was the real need for supercomputer and who are the com companies or who are the organization? Who are the actually using supercomputers? Mostly supercomputers were restricted to university research labs and research labs owned by individual organization mainly. They were used in the areas of computational fluid dynamics, research bioinformatics and a lot more. The general purpose operating system like framework did not exist for parallel computing need. Meaning if a company actually is selling supercomputer, it did not have a ready to sell off the self operating system that can be readily installed as a supercomputer goes live. It was not as simple as that. The companies procuring the supercomputer is locked to a specific vendor for hardware support. Suppose you are buying the supercomputer from IBM, then you have to go back to IBM for any kind of hardware support. The high initial cost of hardware makes the supercomputer literally cost at million of dollars and you have to develop the custom software for each individual use case. For example, if your organization has procured supercomputer, you have to write a full fledged operating system. However, the basic framework support probably could be available to an open source, a source but for most of part you will have to actually customize it for your use cases. So heavily you have to depend upon the internal software engineering team to tailor the software for each kind of problem. What do you want to solve using the supercomputer? This actually led to the high cost of software maintenance, upgrades, bug fixes and everything has to be taken care in house. It is not simple to actually scale the cluster horizontally. Meaning if you want to actually increase the computing capacity of a supercomputer or the storage capacity in your supercomputer, you cannot do it very easily. You require some kind of support from the supercomputer vendor itself. So these were the challenges of supercomputing. If you like the video, please subscribe it and have a good day. Thank you.